Hi everyone, it's Jenny here again. Welcome to Module 3. This is just a short overview to get you in the right direction. You'll see that the title is about learning styles and personality types. So you'll get the impression that there's a bit of self-reflection involved in this, and there is. But don't worry, there's nothing too heavy-handed about it. There's no deep psychological testing going on here. Um, but we do encourage you to start thinking about how you learn best, what suits your personality type best, and it's all about thinking of very practical strategies that are going to help you as a learner and get through your studies. So obviously you'll be going to your study guide to module three and there's a lot of great information there. Um, so don't forget to, to start with the guide. I hope you've got a hard copy of the study guide because it just makes it so much easier. But you will have to go online for this as well to complete some of those profiling tests. So let's have a quick look on Moodle. So if we go to module three, we'll see that the set out is similar as before. You can access your study guide module there online. Now, if we go to the resources for the study guide activities, this will lead us to those particular profiling tools that you will need to complete uh, in order to get through this module. So the first is the Solomon Felder Learning Styles Inventory and the second is the Jung Typology Test. So they're, they're the two really critical parts of this. Let's have a quick look at the Solomon Felder and this is all about learning styles remember. So there'll be a lot of questions there uh, and you're asked to nominate one answer or the other. So you only get a choice of two which can be a little frustrating um, but I just say to students, look, whatever your first reaction was, that's probably the answer to go with. So don't overanalyze it. Um, if you need to look up a word because you don't understand the meaning, well, that's different. But other than that, just, yeah, just what your first uh, response was, your first reaction was. So then you'll be given a profile uh, and you'll see where you are. Uh, uh, where you fit in terms of your preference, for example, towards being an active learner or a reflect reflective learner. And so it's a continuum and you might be strongly one way or the other, or you might in fact fall in the middle. And sometimes students get all anxious about that because they think they don't belong anywhere. But actually being in the middle is good. It means that you are probably adaptable and you can, um, you can be flexible according to the learning situation. Now, there's a couple of um, things to point out here that might help you, a couple of resources. There's a useful handout with a summary, which will supplement the uh, explanation that's given in your study guide. And this particular handout, this particular um, article is really useful. Sorry, there's the summary article and then there's one which details some practical strategies that might help you understand what it, what it actually means um, to have these particular learning preferences and, and what you can put in place to help you learn. Now, the Jung typology, that's the, the other quiz that you'll have to do and that's about your personality type. Now, it's actually based on the Myers-Briggs test and some of you may have heard of that or you may have even done it at some stage. It's very, very common, very popular, uh, often used in workplaces, sometimes even in schools, um, can be used in counselling, for careers counselling, etc. So it's actually a very well-established test. Now, what we're doing is kind of a lightweight version of it. We're not paying hundreds of dollars so that we can do the the rigididge test but we're doing a version of it um, and this is a free version that's available online so clearly you know there are limitations to this um, but really what we urge you to do is just think of it as a starting point a springboard for thinking about certain aspects of yourself now with this one you get a few more options um, you get some statements this time that you respond to and you'll see there that you can either really strongly agree, that would be indicated by the uppercase yes, you are almost never late for your appointments, yes that's definitely me at all times. Um, so you would indicate 
yes in uppercase. If it's you mostly, then perhaps you would indicate the yes in lowercase, which would suggest that you agree, but not strongly agree. If you really, you're really not sure how to answer that, or you really think it very much depends on the situation, and you couldn't say one way or the other, then you can nominate uncertain. No, it's not me. Generally, it's not me. It doesn't describe me. Um, so you would disagree with N-O in lowercase, but if it definitely doesn't describe you, if you know you have a reputation for cutting it fine and getting to things late, then you'd probably nominate no in uppercase. And so you do that for a number of statements and then you will receive a profile and it will be four letters which each uh, stand for a particular personality trait, so INFJ or ESTP, whatever it might be. So then you need to really unpack that and work out, okay, well, what do each of those traits mean? And then be thinking about what the implications might be for you as a student. So there's a really good article here called Your Learning Personality, and that will really help explain some of that a bit better as well. Now you can do the Gardner's Intelligence t Types test if you want to, but that's really just for personal interest uh, and that's optional. Now don't forget about the discussion forum. We generally get some really interesting discussion about this topic, um, so we look forward to, to hearing your thoughts about any aspect of the module and what you've learnt. And of course we're not asking you to necessarily agree with everything that you find out. That's where criti critical reflection comes in. Um, you will see that in your learning portfolio you are asked certain questions about what you found out. It's perfectly okay to disagree, but please give valid reasons and then give examples from your life to back up what you're saying. So yes, once you've finished Module 3, you're actually in a really good position to complete Learning Portfolio A. Hopefully by now you've already downloaded the template and you've been completing each module and then going to the relevant questions in the learning portfolio to do those overview questions. So once you finish module three, then you are in a good, posi good position to finish off learning portfolio A. So look, I hope you get some valuable learning from that. Um, you might even find that you're talking about it with family members and that they'll want to complete the, the Jung typology test too. It does make for some interesting dinner conversation sometimes. Uh, but most importantly, I, I hope that you really learn something about yourself as a learner and get a few really valuable tips to help you. Good luck with all of that. Bye for now.